everybody, welcome, welcome. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an interactive dashboard using Plotly, Dash, and Tiger Graph. Specifically, we're going to create this dashboard. This dashboard takes the value that the user chooses inside the dropdown to define the x-axis of the Plotly Express bar chart. Okay, to follow along, I would highly recommend you download this Python file <coughs> which is under the video. Open it on your computer so you can see exactly what I'm seeing, this whole Python file. A Dash app or a dashboard has four different sections. The first section, you import the libraries that you need for your app. In the second section, you connect to the data. In the third section, you're defining your app layout and the layout is what goes on the page of your app. And in the fourth section is the callback. You have the callback decorator and the callback function. And the callback as a whole is used to connect between um, the components inside the layout. So this callback is going to connect between the dropdown and the graph. Okay? So let's go to section number one. <coughs> the libraries. Make sure to install these libraries if you don't have them. So do pip install dash into your in, uh, virtual environment or onto your computer. Just do pip install dash. Pip install pandas. In most cases you're going to need pandas to manipulate the data. And pip install pytigergraph so we can import the data into our app. And then these are once the the libraries are installed, you can add these um, uh, lines of code that are importing those libraries into this specific app. Now we're going to connect to Tiger Graph to retrieve our data, to bring our data into the app. So here we chose a basic username, Tiger Graph, a password. The Tiger Graph uh, graph name is going to be connectivity. And I took this from our Tiger Graph name right here. You could go here and you see if you click on this, you'll see one of the graph is called connectivity. So this is this is why this is here. And now the Tiger Graph host, you can see it's this. If you go here, you'll see right up here there is the Tiger Graph. Uh, this is a host name right up there. Right? So you just copy paste it into that. And then <coughs> Once you have your uh, defined username and password and host, you can you should connect to your uh, Tiger Graph, create a Tiger Graph connection, and then you have to create a token. Now I'm going to use the secret key. If you go into admin, and then you go into mo uh, management, and then users, you see here that I created. You can create a new key if you want. I already created this demo secret, and this is the key. And this key is the, is the secret value. This is this right here. Okay. And then you have to put the, it's the first thing out of the list. So just put this. And this is your token. So once you have your token, your authentication token, now you can uh, connect to your Tiger Graph again. So you have to connect twice. You have to connect the first time without a token. And then the second time, you connect with your API token and with your graph name, which is connectivity. So now that you have a full connection to your Tiger Graph. Now you can go back into the uh, Graph Studios and you go into, let's go into our queries and you can see here that we have multiple queries but we are, what we are going to do right now is we're going to run an installed query. And this installed query, we're going to connect to run an, uh, we're going to connect to an installed query that's called get calls by person. And you'll see here, click on queries, and we have different queries. This one and this one have been installed, get calls by person, right? And this one has not been installed. So if you, you can create a new query uh, and call it whatever you want, after you are happy with the query and it, it looks like it looks the way you want it to look, then you have to install it. If you run an install query. Later we'll show you how to run a different query, but make sure to install it. You see get calls by person. This is already installed. And this is the query, um, like um, the main body of the query is the res, right? So if we go back, we'll see that we're connecting to the query get calls by person. We'll call it our data. 
And then we're going to transform our data into a data frame, a pandas data frame. So we'll call it our data. Always put the zero after it. And we're going to go into the res, which is right here. Res. And now, <coughs> in this case, we're not using the data birth. But if you use the data birth column, then uh, in this case, we're just going to change it to um, readable um, values of year, uh, month, and day. And we're going to print the column names of this data frame. So you see here, if we lower, the, if we make this bigger, you see these are the, the column names. Gender, date of birth, ethnic group, number of calls, and number of, phone num and number of phones. OK, so we import our libraries. We uh, got our data into our app, our Tiger Graph data, using an installed query. And now we're going to um, define our layout. So here's how we start our app. And in these two things, right here, these couple lines of code, we are creating our drop down and we're creating our graph. So this drop down is a DCC, uh, this is a, a dash core component drop down or drop down component, which has options gender ethnic group and number of phones you see these are the three options the initial option or initial value chosen when the app first loads is going to be gender you see gender multi is going to be false so you can only choose one you can't choose multiple and then style is going to be with 50 percent actually i'm going to add here clearable false and when I, by doing clearable false I won't have an X here so it can never be empty it will always have one type of value gender ethnic group or number of phones you can never clear it you see there's no X anymore okay so now that we have that we can um, this is our drop down <coughs> now we're going to create our graph and this is an empty graph it's a dash uh, graph component with just an empty dictionary inside the figure so there's no figure in there right now that we have our uh, component and a drop down and our graph, we are, we can put this inside our layout. Our layout is always going to be app.layout equals. Usually you will start this with html.div or dbc container if you're using dash bootstrap, but in this case just a div. And inside the div, which is defining your whole page, we're going to put the title, connect graph plotly and, and dash. And we're going to create a label, select x axis. And then we're going to put my drop down and then the number calls graph, just a graph. Okay? Now, this is our layout. Our layout, if we don't have the callback, if we take out, hashtag out the callback, you'll see that these will not be connected. You will only have the drop down and an empty graph, num calls graph, num calls graph, which is an empty figure. There's nothing in there, right? And this is because we don't have, we hid the callback. Now we're going to go into the fourth section of a Dash app, which is define the callback to connect any elements, any components inside the layout. So let's do that. This app is going to rerun. And now we'll see that um, the, uh, the graph is going to show because we're connecting with the callback the drop down to the graph. So let's see how we do this. The callback has to, is divided into two sections, the callback decorator and the callback function. The callback decorator will have output and input, or multiple outputs and multiple inputs. The input is always going to be connected to the callback function argument. So any property, any component property of any input is going to go into the callback function argument. So in this case, this drop-down value refers to the <coughs> refers to the thing that is assigned to the value property of my drop-down. So what is the value property of my drop-down? If you go to the value property of my drop-down, let's go back up. My drop-down, the value property has the gender string assigned to it. So this gender is the same as saying gender here and saying gender here, right? But it's interactive. So you'll see that um, this refers to the string assigned to the value because if I change this to ethnic group, now you'll see that here it says ethnic group. 
if I change this down here to number of phones, you'll see down here that it's number of phones because this is what we're printing out here. So this first argument inside the callback function refers to the first component property of, of the input, to the component property of the first input. If you have two inputs, you'll have two component properties, so you need two arguments. If you have three inputs, you need three arguments. Okay? So we're taking this drop-down value, which is whatever the user chooses, and with this value, we're going to assign this value to the x-axis of the Plotly Express bar chart. So here it's very simple. We're creating a Plotly Express uh, bar chart. We're using the DF as a main data frame. You see DF right here. We're going to use that as the main data frame. The y-axis is always going to be number of calls. And the x-axis is either going to be um, gender or ethnic group or number of phones because this is the value or the string that is a, that is assigned to the value property of the drop down okay right here so it's as if if i'm choosing gender it's as if this is saying gender if i'm choosing ethnic group or number of phones it's as if this is saying number of phones it's exactly the same thing but it's interactive so i can't define it i will only define it by whatever the input value is. And then I return this figure into, uh, this is assigned, this figure is assigned to the figure property of my graph, right? Which is right here. This figure that I just built is assigned to the figure property right here instead of the dictionary. So that's why it's interactive. You see? Anything you return in a callback function any object you return in a callback function always returns to the component property of the output or is this is assigned to the component property of the output. If you have two outputs, you need to return two objects. If you have three outputs, you have to return three objects. The first one is on the left, the second output is in the second object and so on and so on. Okay? So this is how you create our uh, dash uh, app using Tiger Graph and Plotly Express. Now, we ran or we uh, uh, ran an installed query, right? But what if we don't want to ro uh, run an installed query? What uh, query? <laughs> what if we want to um, run an interpreter query like this? Which means we run our query, we write our query inside the app, and we run the query without having to create it here and without having to install it. You could do that. It's just a little bit slower but you could do that. So let's see an example here. We're going to run this interpreted query because we are going to give our user the option to choose uh, the data set size. So in this case, in this query, the original query, we have limit to 100 rows, but we're going to give them the option to limit it. Let's, let's put this in here. Line 37 and 38. <coughs> We are going to limit it to either 100, in this, ra this dash uh, radio items component is going to have 100, 500, and 1,000. So we're going to give them an option <coughs> to ha bring in a bigger data set. Okay. Now, this is not connected to the callback uh, yet. So if I click on this, it doesn't change anything. So now let's connect this radio item. See that we're using a walrus here. This walrus is because we're defining it inside the HTML div. If you want to define it outside, just take this outside and just use a, an equal sign. But here is inside, so we use a walrus. So now let's connect this radio item to um, the callback and to the graph, right, inside the callback. So we'll take, this is called data size. So we'll activate this input. And this input is data size. The property is going to be the value of this 500 of this radio item. So we, we need we have two inputs, so we need two arguments. We'll have d, and we'll call this d size. Okay. So the second argument is called d size. Let's even print and see what we get. D size. And now that I have this second argument called d size. Um, I'm still not doing anything with it. I'm not changing the data. I'm just saying change this. And if I change it, it's going to print out um, a, a different D size. Oh, we'll, we'll see that later, actually. Um, <coughs> so we have our D size. 
Right here you see it says 500. If I change this to 1000, you'll see now it says gender in 1000. Because anytime I click on the drop down or change the, the radio item, I'm triggering the, the callback. I'm triggering the app. You see the app is updating up here. Okay. So now that we have our D size, now instead of running this, we're going to close this and we're going to run our interpreter query. All this. Like that. Now we're going to run an inquiry right here. So let's hashtag this out. We don't need this because this is an installed query. We don't want this query anymore. We want to run the query only if a user chooses a radio item or a different a different drop down. So you see right here up here it says that it's updating. Right. It's going to take a few more seconds because an, an interpreted query takes a little bit more time than an installed query. Okay. So let's see what we're doing here. We're connecting to our, instead of run install query, we're doing run interpreted query. And then we're putting this into uh, multiple quotation marks, three here and three at the very end. And we're saying uh, interpret query, which is very similar to this. Instead of create query, we're saying interpret query. And we'll call this get calls by person limited because we want to limit it. We can't, we shouldn't use the same query. It's a different query, but we're going to limit it. And the parameter that we're going to use is data size. It's going to be an integer. So this data size is going to be right here inside the limit data size. So instead of a hundred, this new query is going to have an, um, uh, it's the opposite of static. It's going to have an interactive or, or a live um, uh, parameter that's going to change as the user changes the radio item. So this is data size, and this data size, here you define this parameter, it equals D size. And remember, D size equals is the value or the, uh, the integer that's tied to the value of the radio item. So if this is, if the radio item chosen is uh, a thousand, this becomes a thousand right here. And if this becomes a thousand, then this is a thousand. And if this is a thousand, then you know that this is 1000. And obviously then the data size here is 1000 as well. Okay. Um, and once we have our, our query that we run, then we can just um, connect and, and make it a data frame like we did before, change the date of birth uh, just so it's readable values, and then create our same bar chart figure that we created, and then return this into the, assign this into the component property of the output. And in this case, it's the graph. So we're assigning this right here. You see, so that's why if I change the drop down, this is updated as well. It takes a few seconds. Or if I change the radio item, then then we just we're doing the same bar chart, but we're, we're using fewer uh, uh, rows from the data set. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned a lot, um, specifically how to create a Dash app and how to run an install query or how to run an interpreter query. Good luck. Enjoy building your dashboard with Plotly, Dash, and Tiger Graph. Have fun. Bye-bye.